I was born a twin with my brother Peter. We grew up intensively playing American football. We were very good football players. I loved the sensation of movement in space, to find a flow and become intuitive in chaos in the frame of a football field. My brother Peter tore his knee playing football. In the hospital, our mother and father gave us two books. The Decisive Moment by Henri Cartier-Bresson and the book The Family of Man. What I saw in these two books was the incredible possibility with photography to be creative, to have an access to the world and access to different cultures. I love to learn from meeting people, and I love the possibility to use photography as a means to meet people. I had an appreciation from the time I was very young for civil rights and for diversity, and I understood that photography gives me the opportunity to celebrate diversity with my work. I have also had the privilege to be raised during the time of the Vietnam War, witnessing the incredible power of photography to change public opinion against the war in Vietnam. Growing up in an industrial city in the heart of the United States, I have always been very conscious and sensitive to the realities of the working class. I have always had the profound conviction that people should be valued by the content of their character and not by the amount of money they have. People often ask me, how do I experience the life of a documentary photographer witnessing the most extreme realities of humanity? I always share my belief that it is a privilege to be around people who believe in something strong enough to risk their life for it. People are willing to suffer for what they believe in. In South Africa, I had the privilege over many years to be surrounded by millions of people ready to give their lives to bring down the system of apartheid. I became a very close family friend with the Mandela family. The night that Mandela, Nelson Mandela was liberated from prison after 27 years of a life sentence, I was invited to be at the dinner table in his home in Soweto for his first meal. It is the honor of my life to be with people who believe so much in the dignity of humanity. I never romanticize suffering, but when you are with people who share the solidarity of their beliefs and suffering, it is an enormous privilege to share the experience and connection of that sense of collectivity and purpose. I love to get to know people and to fully immerse in their lives. I spent two years documenting and photographing the lives of an elderly farm couple who lived on a subsistence farm in the Midwest of America, Anna and Flander. Their lives fascinated me and moved me. They became like family to me. I spent two years documenting life in Pole Town, a multicultural and multiracial neighborhood in Detroit that the city was going to raise to make way for a GM Cadillac plant. There were 6,000 people displaced from realities of being a part of a community. My life was changed when I came to France when I was 19 years old. I was overwhelmed by the French appreciation for beauty and the values of liberty, equality, and fraternity an appreciation for vulnerability and for being a part of a collective that looks out for one another with compassion, by the appreciation of values of sensuality and aesthetic beauty that is so fundamental in this country. I don't go to war because I like war. I detest war. But it is important for people to know the reality of war. War is never like a video game. Human life and dignity are at risk. And for a democracy to work, it is necessary for people to understand and have information about what is actually happening in war. I made this photograph of Ken Kozakowicz as he just learned that his best friend was in a body bag next to him in an evacuation helicopter. 
For me, this photograph is about humanity. I don't differentiate my appreciation for human life because of someone's nationality. I believe in the value of Iraqi lives as I believe in the value of American lives. I believe in human lives. When I went to Ukraine, I was very shocked by the gravity of this tragic war, by the quantity of refugees that from one minute to the next have to pack their entire lives into two bags and leave their homes, their husbands, their brothers, their sons. I have never known nor believed in the notion of objectivity. I am a human being with a heart that beats and has feelings, and I want to express these feelings with all of my being. But what I do believe in is the responsibility to be fair. When I was in South Africa, I always said, I want to do everything I can to photograph and to share with people around the world the injustice of the system of apartheid. So if you want to tell me that this is not objective, I will say it is objectively not fair for the system of apartheid to treat people in function of the color of their skin. The honor I have as a documentary photographer to earn the trust to enter people's lives to use photography to share my love and compassion for people's lives, to bear witness, is an enormous privilege. But I also take this enormous responsibility very seriously. I try with all of my heart and soul to share with my work the dignity of the people that I photograph in a way that inspires others to care. I work with all of the tenacity, compassion, and heart to find the combination of visual and emotional elements that can value the soul of a person's humanity. From the moment I had the good fortune to discover photography, I've had the humble feeling that I was called to do this work that I am inspired to dedicate my life to. And with this privilege and commitment, I don't have any regrets. I am honored to have a life and career for which I have incredible gratitude. <laughs>